Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO the last years of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. John Glenn Level, but right now we got quite a few uh things here to read. <clears throat> On Empires. Walking down the ruined streets of Damascus was surreal. Ancient houses were blown with shell holes, the walls of churches that had once served worshippers from extinct denominations were visited by bullet wounds. And all of this in one of the less war torn countries of the Middle East. Thomas Ward could scarcely hide his awe. The local transit assigned to him, a deeply cynical man in Ward's eyes, must have noticed. Brushing to fill the sounds with something, Thomas went on in one of his most impromptu speeches. He was planning to write about his visit after all, better rehearse what he was going to send to the New York Times. Now, what you were seeing here is a result of a minor skirmish of the grand scheme of things, right? A minor skirmish compared to what's happening in ba Baghdad, Cairo, heck, Aden. And yet, it's horrific. There's no explanation. The man beside him hardly stirred, which he took as a sign to keep talking. Some say that Syria has been spared the worst of the crisis. I can't say that in good consciousness. As a stand amidst the results of a small standoff between government forces and a single armed resistance group, you know. Perhaps the country was spared for a reason. The Turks were notorious for the violations of human rights in the region, going as far back as the old Ottoman Empire, and the new Italian Empire somehow made them look kind. Many may have forgotten the Italo Turkish War. The second Italo Turkish War, that's a distinction most people don't bother to make, but I was here. This age of empires had an incomprehensible effect on the people of the country. The transit cut him off, and it's not going to be over anytime soon. While the Germans are in shambles, hardly able to look away from Europe, the Japanese regime is cracking under the weight of its own bloated leadership. There is another empire, such empire. I'm not here to accompany an agent of the Germans or the Japanese, am I? It is the same power that funded the resistance group that did this. The man gestured at a nearby pool of blood. They spent the rest of the walk in silence. <clears throat> in which we're still to, so involved in the Middle East, and now we're to 60%, 60%, or just 60, to Beirut with peace. Christopher Booth had seen such fighting, or much fighting, in his time. He'd borne witness to the Pacific Theater, been right there on the ground in South Africa, and even spent two months deployed to Indonesia as an advisor to the pro-FN forces. The Marines had made a man out of him, and he was henceforth sent around the world on a mission to do the same to other men. Being sent to Beirut to train a local volunteer force was practically a vacation. One look at the two dozen men who was here to give basic training to did nothing to dispel the notion. Most spoke Fr some French, good. Some spoke English, great. Best of all, most of the youths came from the par same part of the city, for once. He considered his appointment a lucky choice, but as they had, been, had an annoying tendency to do so, problems soon arose. He did not know nor care what a Merrill Knight was, but the apparent presence of one in his unit made two other men uneasy, and an argument broke out as soon as they were left unattended. He'd seen that before, Southerners and South Africans uncomfortable serving beside a man of a different skin tone, but the men involved in the argument were practically identical, worse. It appeared that the incident had set off all sorts of invisible lines between the men. Merrill Knights, Muslims, Shia, Sunnis, even Armenians. How the heck did the Armenians get here? All supposedly featured in some quantity. Perhaps the biggest mistake he made was asking just why those two Sunni troops <clears throat> felt it necessary to start a fight with one of the Maronites. This set off the entire group under debate in four languages on family feuds, 12th century crusader states, and obscure religious movements. It was all too much. After 30 minutes of the cir circus, Booth decided to send the man back to the barracks and in separate groups. God forbid they see each other on the way back. The problems of this part of the world seemed entirely alien to him, and no one at the embassy was going to be of any use until the service here was up. Very well, Beirut may not end up like may not end up being quite the vacation. Let's try again tomorrow. And our sixty two I apologize for my voice cracking there. A couple of comments include that we should build more hospitals and army bases, which yeah, we probably actually probably will, so uh, we'll get there in a little bit of time as we're still building up a lot more reactors. Um we play as Tom's Bastillards. We should we can apparently assist Free France if it's a three way war down here. That'd be kinda cool. Oh Free France is back, look at that. Oh they're back. Who the heck are you, Philippe? And anyways, someone says, support Iraq and go to Mars. Look to the Arabian Peninsula. Oil prices have finally fallen from the peak after fast, pants-taking action from Washington in the crisis immediate days. Once growing to exponential highs, now they begin their slow yet inexorable decline to bearable lows. It may take years before they fully return to normal, if they ever return, of course, but America sighs a breath of relief regardless of its people. Knowing that they can finally go back to work and reasonably pay for their essentials, and its government, knowing it can finally turn out words to address the oil shock's root cause. Many can reasonably point to Italy's crumbling empire in the Middle East as the point zero of the world market's gross new ink pain. Their inability to contain or at least moderate. The Arab people's unrest has caused wave after wave of disruptions to the world's large supplier of cheap, sweet, crude oil. With Congress near unanimous in their apathy for the ailing and aloof empire's miserable fortunes, Washington has decided that supporting the movements to break the peninsula free from Rome's towns will most help in stabilizing the region and in turn those oil wells. So even proponents of the pro-Arab intervention are divided over its both extent and recipient. Vegas debate sprung over whether America should lend its hand to Yasser Arafat's Ba'athists in the United Arab Republic, or two, the influential House of Saud and its patriarch King Faisal. 
If ambiguous over said hand size, shape, and delivery, then per the President of the United States has at least settled the prior argument by deciding in favor of, well, this United Arab Kingdom of Palestine and Georgia. That sounds kind of cool. Led by King Abdullah over there. Abdullah, Abdullah. That's actually really cool that they're all united over there. That's really nice. The Syrian Republic under Hafez al-Assad. He's most a smiley man. We have, of course, we did win in Iraq, which is very cool. And, of course, look at that. Oh, U.S. Army Advisors. And then we also, of course, did win in Oman. And, of course, we did win in the Republic of Sudan. Look at that. So now, ooh, that's, that's actually really good. Uh, we can either choose a Saudi Arabia, which doesn't really care for us too much. And they are getting bombed by the Germans. But then again, so is Egypt. And they're not done with their war yet. And both sides don't really care for us too much. I want to go with the more stable nation of probably this group, the Pan-Arabs in Cairo. Pan-Arabs. The dynasty in Riyadh. Let's go with them. i will go with them. So, let's see what happens. For right now, we're doing fan of big business. I'll reach out to Riyadh. Is this different? Oh. Man, Riyadh. An unsavory bargain. They can be trusted. They can handle this war. Operation Eagle Eye. Support is conditional. Call it the palace victims of war. Expand the no-fly zone. That's okay. Enlist our allies. Ooh, grow. Ooh. We'll reward our generosity. Grow them more unified. Which we could use. Use the CIA for some more clandestine operations. Prepare the blockade. Secure our interests. I guess I'll probably do that one. King Faisal, I'm CIA. I think, you know, I think I've done this one before as well, though. I get some income. I like that. Send up shipments. Re reward of generosity, huh? Fighting their leaders. Pick your targets. Black Gold Rush. Okay. In for the kill. Uh, and I'm Savory Bargain. We'll see what happens. I do want to just not really concern ourselves with that too much now that Shah Ivaran was just assassinated, but we do need to read about these other ones as well. I like this one. Correct on a corruption. Uh, I think I did more of this one earlier, but let's read this anyways. Although our successes as an administration have been fruitful for the American people, successes of the working man have been revealed. A blank blanket of corruption ties towards current legislation. The continuous complaints to the general public about our administration revealed a key detail in their monopolist control over the market, the tax incentives. Present current legislation grows or uh, allows these massive investments to continuously grow bigger, eventually giving way to the establishment. Of unfair business practices, considering our administration's aims of cutting out unfair business practices, as well as a destruction of corrupt elements of the government, it is without a doubt a nece necessity to repeal such tax policies. As it is unquestionable that these huge marketplaces have already sunk their fortunes into the pockets of representatives and senators vouching for them. For the sake of American fairness and equality, we must deal with this burden on society. Nice. We like this one a lot, and this one as well. Sometime this morning, an urgent message caught the attention of the president. With two states left in the former Soviet Union, uh, the Russian Empire in Western Russia, and the regency of Siberia in Siberia, the struggle for the unification is almost finished. Both nations declared war on each other not long ago, and the winners almost certainly had well, complete control over the former lands of Russia. An important cabinet meeting was called today with several advisors to the president, making their cases and discussing strategies on how to best support American interests in the war. Much like the other two reunification wars, the CIA is once again offering their help and reassures the president that no candidate will. Went without our explicit approval. After hours of discussion, the entire room entirely comes to a conclusion and concludes that, okay, the Iranians have war. Oh, crap. Sad school prevails there, huh? Um. Okay, cool. As expected. In recent years, we've been we've seen Persia as being a wide breeding ground for repression and ruthless authoritarianism during the rule of Pahlavi. Pressures from Berlin and Tokyo have caused a cave-in for the fragile political structure that once brought nation, however. The people have started to speak out against tyranny and our shining opportunities developing itself right before our eyes. The National Front, formerly outlawed under the Shah's one-party dynasty, has made a resurgence to the local population, and every class seems to so show support. Farmers, soldiers, and noblemen alike. In a surprising referendum directed at the parliament, the people demanded free elections, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, among others. As a result, over 200 freedom fighters dead, over a thousand wounded, angered at the sight. Democratic politicians continue to speak out against the Shah while building up a competent army in the southern half of the country along the Zagros Mountains and the Persian coast. The constitution was signed in the new Republic of Iran and succeeded only a few hours ago. Holy crap. Persia is a gate through which the Caucasus, India, Central Asia, and the Middle East can be accessed. We also don't want the barbaric German eagle spreading his towns over the oil reserves in Iran with a friendly government. Any chance the Germans have at filling up the pans with Persian oil slim? If the Libs win this conflict, they can easily be our experiment with democracy in the region, or beacon of hope for the peoples of the Middle East. We must be hasty. The frail democracy is already on the defensive. Yet another struggle for freedom is all we need. Um, 16 days. Ooh. Will that ruin the focus? Hopefully not. And, no, it does not. That's really good. Alright, after this one, we'll probably, instead of doing that one over there, 
the Iranian Civil War. Poor grips Iran, one of the few countries in the Muslim world with a strong tradition for democracy. If we are serious about a commitment to ensuring fascism is contained everywhere in the world, we must be as forceful and determined in our response to civil war as we are in the countries like South Africa and Indonesia. The U.S. has always been and will always remain a steadfast ally of anti-fascists everywhere, and America has always been a true friend of Iran. We must look to organizing a response. We cannot let the fascists control their oil reserves there to fuel their fuel, uh, oil reserves there to fuel their evil empires. Now, now we had a Supreme Court justice die actually uh, off screen. Also, we had the elections too, so we have now 42 Republicans, 18 Democrats, and I didn't do any counts, commands, or use a cheat mod at all for this. This is just the natural way things turned out. Ooh, even with the oil crisis, we still lose poverty. Nice. Uh, we have quite a few uh, right uh, MPP senators and senator, so that's how it turned out. Of course, elections, political landscape, uh, pretty good. Not good at all. We have four conservatives and five liberals. Um, I forget which one it was. Now, partisan. We'll go to the liberal option just because we need the liberal option here. Now, it's going to be uh, relatively liberal. I, I forget which one we, we died. It's very liberal now. Three conservatives and six liberals. We're a very liberal uh, Supreme Court here, which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but still. No support of faction? No, we did really well here. Yemen is still going on. Okay. Yeah, Yemen, you got to finish this up, son. Either way, we still lose pretty much, but can we help you out here? Was it this one? No. Look at all these people here. All want to kill each other eventually. All right. So, 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 send volunteers. Yeah, I'll send volunteers. Democratic Republic. Islamic Republic. There we go. Oh, no, I can send two divisions. Not bad. I wish I could send more, but whatever. I'm actually... Yeah, I'm going to send you guys. There we go. Nothing like sending some guys to gun down some Iranian boys. Evil Iranian boys, I should add to that. Not all Iranian boys and girls. Just enough of them. Ah, South Africa looking looking pretty nice, not gonna lie. Looking pretty darn nice. 160, huh? Not bad. Nice. Well, if you get there, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And who else will be here? Uh, Westmoreland. I like Westmoreland. He's a fun guy. Alright, can we win here? Of course we can. We can actually win before the whole Civil War really breaks even down even further, so. You have a little bit of time. Judicial shakeup. If you wanted this, please go ahead. We lose some stability, but whatever. Ooh, actually, that's really bad. Ooh. You know what? Maybe we should have gotten the conservative side just because, yeah, I don't want to lose any political power, and we need as much liberal support as possible. Yeah, that'd probably be for the best. The Iranian Aid Bill. The Foreign House Affairs Committee swiftly drawn up a bill authorizing dispatch advisors, equipment, and financial aid to Iran, as well as authorizing the government to advertise, organize, dispatch, volunteer for divisions for both veteran and act active duty army personnel. Once this goes to Congress, we'll be able to uh, help will be on its way to brave Iranians. My apologies, even though we, we just won. Okay, we just won. Um, well, I guess we're going to go back on the right side here. Crack down on corruption once again, so that'll be good. Get more uh, political power, quite a bit more stability as well. So that increase income taxation, low income weighted. With the Iranian aid bill, just as more in Congress passed the Iranian aid bill with an acceptable majority, gave us the power to send volunteers and military advisors to the National Front Forces. <clears throat> Until equipment can reach the Persian coast, we've invested $100 million to keep the liberals fighting. Furthermore, this bill ensures our lasting cooperation with the Republic of Iran. We are now committed to keep the end lit for as long as possible. Already, as money flows into the newly established nation, the locals have been praising us for swift efforts. We've also been getting positive reports from the population here, and it seems people are more eager to com combat oppression in Iran than any other war in the past decade. We cannot fail the public now. Quite the lending hand of faraway land. We won. Not down here. They're still killing each other. But we won. Look at that. Yay, we won. <laughs> now what? Do some budget? Okay. Sounds good to us. Economy wise, still no debt. 19 billion still reserve. Our growth is going down even more, which does suck, but let's see if we can do it. Do something about that right now. 20, 20 billion sounds about right? That basically did nothing. Okay, that's not good right now. Hmm. I like this a plus, but we need the economy to start growing and not shrinking. Ooh, it's been down a little bit. That's not good. It's not good at all. Military austerity, that wouldn't really do much. We want to spend more. Uh, let's try that. We still have a surplus. Okay, now we've at least some growth. Some growth, not a lot of growth, but not good for them to kill themselves as well. And this thing is still here. American aid inbound. I mean, we could do this one. We actually lose daily political power. Give more daily arm XP, though. Oh, huh, interesting. So some equipment, loans, grand strategy. Well, I guess we don't do this one at all, so let's keep going this way. And part of the Senate Ethics Committee. The people, the United States government, having acted in the people's goodwill for so long, is an unfortunate underbelly of corrupted history found within. 
Th though our executive branch has been the focus of corruption, we must expand our focus towards the legislative branch as well. With such foul acts of criminality existing in the very lawmaking body of our nation, we must build new foundations to ensure that we can clean up any spots of corruption in the U.S. Congress. Having said that, it's our administration's prerogative to empower the Senate Ethics Commission. As such, a political body could serve the country as both a watchdog and cleanup service for any dark spots of corruption found within our representatives and senators no longer. Will the acts of bribery and intimidation stay in the legislative process of our constitutional republic instead? We should remain active as a strong, resolute, and morally sound government that acts purely for the sake of the American citizen, one step at a time. President Glenn let a heavy, hearty laugh in the early hour mornings of D.C. You're kidding me, right? He asked Metzenbaum, who offered just as wide smile as, as Glenn. Not at all, Mr. President. That senator looked like a kid caught with a hand in a cookie jar when he started hearing about some of the anti-corruption measures being drafted and put into effect current, which would, would incur, uh, affect current federal processes. Needless to say, I think it was only about 10 minutes after that he decided to tuck his tail between his legs and scamper out of the dinner party. Once more, the president and the chief of staff, chief of staff exchanged some laughter and smiles. Now, Mr. Metzenbaum, I have sadly to inform you that we still have to work at some point today, so let's get to the point. We still need to work on those reports found of the effects of some of the new policies. What do you have for me? Metzenbaum unveiled a manila folder containing a variety of documents inside before giving it to the president. To put it bluntly, sir, the measurements the administration put together and into, put into effect well work. A variety of officials in the government have rescinded deals they have made with less reputable organizations and businesses, and there have been reports that processes in the government are moving fast by as much as 105 percent of some committees. The president, though appearing confident and expecting over the news, was more than anything proud. Proud of himself, of course, but proud of his administration, proud of the work put forward, proud of the process, and even proud of the of progress and proud of the officials that he turned aside turned aside to clean themselves up. The government was one of the aspects of American society that needed to close that gap of empathy regarded or present in the modern day, and they have managed to make progress in closing what seemed like an endless canyon of antitrust and deceit. Howard, how would you like your Take some time to see your family. We know you've been keeping here for too long. Ooh, I have an official speak. It's, it's oh, look at this. <gasps> oh, look at that. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, an admin efficiency is actually going up. It almost got really, really bad there. Holy crud. That's all right. We're going to do okay, everybody. I'm waiting for Iran to blow up again. Who else is new? Oh, wow. Look at that. We have a surplus even when we did a tax cut. Doing whatever we can to save the economy. I swear. Restrict lobbying. Ooh. I should have asked you guys which one we should have done. Ban lobbying? We will lose access to private sources of funding for NASA. Oh! Restrict lobbying. Not all this funding is clean. Restrict lobbying? You know what? No, we're, we're not going to restrict it. We're going to ban it. Begin to improve. This Now, admin officials begin to improve versus slowly improve. we got to go this way. Increase the NASA budget by $125 million? That's not, no, that's not much. Decrease by $85 million? We'll do it anyways. Significantly increase our support, but after we get some more technology. Or get, go this way. Oh, that's a little ahead of time. Uh, we're not going to use that, but that's okay. Finally, the administration has managed to put the boot down upon our lobbying groups that took the reins of our nation unfortunately so long ago. With enough work and effort put together by the cabinet, we have managed to unshackle American leadership and being able to lead how they want, not how lobbyists want. Now, however, we have them on the defense. And we've waited long enough to finally begin pushing for a final move against their injustice. A complete ban of political lobbying within our nation. Injustices towards the American people are wrought within these groups and far too much corruption is allowed to flourish in democracies in the world and to imagine it with their nation, with, within our nation is, of course, discussion. Disgusting. We must make the final move as banning lobbying groups will hopefully be strong enough to push our leaders far back from any corruptive acts which may sway their acts in office instead. We shall act as more than just a society. More as more just society. Without any restrictions at all from the scum of lobbying. Oh, look at that. And we're still trying to get uh, more hospi uh, hospitals. Yeah, yeah I can use more hospitals. Florida? Sure. Why not? Hospitals? Here. Florida. As well as California. Why not? That part of California. Well, looks like y'all couldn't keep the peace. What's wrong with all y'all? Nice. And do we still have guys down here too? Yes, we do. Fighters and casts. Well, I'll send them over first. Let's see what happens. Nice. All right, so we said, oh, 100, nice. 50, 50. Very, very good. Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Dude, you guys are about to be cut off here. It's just not very good, my friends. Not very good. But other than that, not bad. All right, so we're on the line pretty much. Let's go in and see what we can do. Where's Westmoreland? I love Westmoreland. I don't know why. He just has a nice last name. That's why I love him so much. I'll love you if you have a really good last name. Those are that's my terms and conditions. 
Well, we're doing really well here, so keep going. Uh, Estefan? Estefan, please, yes? Well, would you look at that? Reaching across again. The Congress, the legislative branch, are the federal government, the lawmaking body of the U.S., and one of the most important pieces of a political machine, and yet, thought President Glenn, despite their incredible importance, we have to sink our hands deep into their processes to make sure they stop any corruption from manipulating their jobs. Glenn pays in his office, looking at the paper stacked up on his desk, the Senate Ethics Committee, or Commission, actually, hold on, let's before we do that one. There we go, that's better. <clears throat> it's going to change the face of the current legislative process in order to make sure that not a single senator will act without a greater interest in their hearts, but now I have to worry about the leaders between a Democrat or Republican. Glenn sat down, took a look around, the phone on his desk, taking his interest first before taking a stack of social reform bills and slipping through them. Promoting a Republican will allow them to create a strong grip over the Congress and allow us to make it easier for Republican senator programs and bills to navigate through the already effective process. Up and out all those poor Americans who need our help now more than ever, he put the papers back on his desk before massaging his eyes. But the Democrats will probably throw a fit, after all. They're right when they say getting rid of corruption within the government should not be a partisan effort, and knowing them, they're probably going to accuse us of pinning blame on the corruption on them if we don't put a Democrat ahead of the commission. Glenn hadn't even noticed the difficult decision had him tap tapping his foot in the usually serene office. Corruption isn't one-sided. The influence of the RDs, or the R's and the RDs, will significantly increase. Um, influence of the Democrats will increase slightly. Eh, slight division, whatever. Democrats will win a sideline anyways, probably eventually. Uh, $9 billion. $30 million. Oh, we have 14, 14, 80 million dollars. It's not bad. Yeah, we've already pretty doing pretty darn well helping out the libs in this area here, this one nation. There you go, thank you. Yeah, cheat mod. Uh, why are you still back open? Okay, there you go. Spend more money, more money for NASA. NASA need more money. We'll build a lot of hospitals. What are they, anticipating COVID or something? How are we doing here? Doing okay? Doing alright? Having a good old time? You're not doing anything. Okay, fine. Please do not lose your capital. That would not be very good. You go right there. You go right there. Beat the crap out of them and circle and kill. Take all the territory you possibly can. Keep moving on. Not bad. I love Iran. Especially when it blows up and we have a good old time with it. There you go. Especially with these militia divisions here. Not too bad. I won't get the, take these guys out. This is not too bad for, for them, but we'll see what happens. Good job, guys. Good job. Uh, more money. More money. Democratic defiance. The president a long day of bill drafting, command and draft new programs and procedures uh, to combat corruption and all the other responsibilities that, of course, <clears throat> that come with acting as president of the U.S. As he had just closed his eyes to rest in bed, a series of knocks at the door immediately woke the Ohio from his rest, opening the door. The president's chief political advisor was standing in the doorway. Sir, are you, you're going to want to come see this. The president got his office when he had seen the cause for all the alarm of message. Or message. A massage. A message. Faxed over to his office from one of the Democratic senators of Texas. He looked over the document carefully. Your decision in picking the head of the Senate the Ethics Commission was politically charged and unfair. The president gripped the bridge of his nose, having known that this decision was going to be a break on progress at worst, and headed at him for best. We henceforth demand your compliance, reversing your direction or decision. Doing so allow the Congress to act unitedly and allow our party to remain equal without the Republicans or Democrats overtaking one another. Members of our coalition have even voiced desires that defect to the MPP if you do not meet our desires for justice and equality in a Congress soaked to the bone with corruption and injustice. We're doing this for America, Mr. President, as is our duty to act for a constitution alone with fairness. It's going, to take, it's going to make the Republicans chew me up and spit me out if I go along with this, Glenn said, recognizing the dangers and working towards unity within his own party. Now, Mr. President, I know this looks bad, but hear me out. If we're to say keep going, maintain our current course, maybe they'll back off, realize that you represent the head of the party, and your knowledge of presidential matters surpasses their desires. Call their bluff, if you will. Well, let's take a look. Can't unify. I know we're middle ground now, which does kind of suck. Can't split the party at a time like this. Well, we're still in the middle, so that's not terrible. So we're moderately liberal. Moderately lib right now. Ooh, they're spreading out like cancer, though. That's not good. That's really not good, actually. Ooh, where's the capital? It's down here where we do it some time. Hopefully, we can get these guys done and put up quickly, so. We do have quite a bit of political power, too, which is really nice. Here, head this way. I just want to just go straight to the capital. 
They should capitulate there, and we can double back, back down here, and then there, and then there. Oh, well, that's not bad, no? Not bad. After banning lobbying, the city on a hill. With a shining sun, a gentle breeze, a fair economy, and a happy, healthy American populace, we have, rest assured, done what we can to make sure the U.S. of A. has better off when we came in as every American politician ought to, to, ought to do to wish. Ought to wish to do. And now their help leaders are no longer being clamped down by lobbyist schemes, and with that we have already seen happiness with the Americans. The effort put in a social reform ought to have done more than to win over their hearts and minds, and with our efforts to help the broken, we have managed to create a more caring society as well. Around the world, democracy has been harmed by the stains of dictators and corruption, but we have done. Well, we can make sure that the United States can stand as an example for abroad. America is beautiful, and Americans are worthwhile people to care for, and now that we have it, it's time to move forward in history and look more into the future, into the heavens above. Oh, you betcha. With a great power comes great defiance. President Glenn sat in his Oval Office, skimming through a variety of legislative papers, West Wing uh, official reports, letters and messages from RDA officials, and etc. Ever since the decision in Tyler Republican as the head of the Senate Ethics Commission, that damned letter for afterwards from those Dick's Crest senators, thoughts and questions fill the back of Glenn's mind. Should I have done it? Are they really going to defect to the MPP after all the work we've managed to pull together? A bang capitulated Glenn out of his inner thoughts as he looked up and, and into the crowded doorway of his office as Metzenbaum stood followed by several advisors. Mr. President, I think you need to see this. A row of TVs in the Oval Office were lit up with images of protests and speeches around the nation, especially in the South. Members of the RD Party stood furious over the announcement of the Republican being entitled as head of the Senate Ethics Commission. Various Democratic senators gave speeches within their precincts, rallying citizens behind them in their protests against unfair partisanship and the disgusting singling out of Democrats and investigations and corruption. Some even moved forward with their official resignations from the RDs, followed by their treasonous joining of the MPP in front of a live audience, followed by cheers and frantic ravings from the crowds below. The media already jumped onto the bleeding carcass of a crisis unfolding and doled out statistics of plummeting support for the RD party in response to grave accusations of abuses over Republican control of the government. All around, the advisors stood sweating, tapping their feet, and pacing around the room to deal with the pressure facing them. Metzenbaum himself, a man known for his miracles in the legislative process, stood with a mouth agape and went sweat running across his forehead. After a long few minutes of processing the situation, he turned his head and asked, Mr. President, how do we handle this? God help us, Howard, and we're going to need to get a couple drinks. Constantly bickering. Well, at least we're not like the NPP. Uh, their party's class. Hey, we got it. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Let's see you on hill. Now we can deal with these guys. Oh, is this group not at war? I don't understand why this group is not usually not at war. Sometimes they are, but not, not usually. 97.5%. Not bad. Operation Porcelain. Not really interested in that one. There you go. Get propulsion? Now we gotta do that a whole bunch too. A whole bunch. Bunch hole. Bunch hole. Hey, we're gonna improve academic pace because we're ahead finally. That is something to be celebrated, my friends. Nice. Ah, screw it. Go up to 150 with you guys. Nice. Even more damage. Anything else here? No. Hmm. Got some extra civvies here. We've been in a lot of hospitals. How's the economy doing? Well, it's growing a little bit more. One thing social spending is not going to help out. Two things social spending then. 10 billion extra dollars in reserve. That ain't too bad. Alright, let's go there. That's my bad. City on Hill. Now, Dream Never Died. If you want to read this, please go right ahead. I don't remember which way we have to go first, but we'll pretty much do most of this anyway, so. I can't wait. It's the pathway to the sky. Sounds amazing. Expand and explore men over machines. Nice. Good job, guys. Oh, crap. This is not good now over here. You can't expect to win this war for you. You gotta do your own little part, too, son. Uh, public support. 9%. There you go. All right, preparedness boosters, dust off plans, get some research points, get some research points. New NASA sci-fi fighting the capital of the world. Once more, President John Glenn looked, took some time out of his day to look past the curtains held over the windows of the Oval Office. As the sun pierced through the clouds above the city, Glenn breathed in deeply with a large smile. The man from Ohio knew that it was going to be a difficult to see as beautiful a view as one he's been taken in at the moment. 
But for now, without words of the future plaguing his mind, he allowed the songs of birds to fill his ears and the warmth of the setting sun around over his face. The president had become, after so many around the country praised him for being throughout his presidency, happy. For now, Glenn knew that America was ready to take his next steps forward in the world. His administration was not going to last forever, and while there were still issues to handle in American society, he knew that they had to be done all they could. After so many years, the work had been put through to close that sorrowful gap of empathy that was present for so many years in the sad American society. The weak, needy, and downtrodden had finally received the work they needed to rise out of their pits of sorrow and pain. The people of America, both able and disabled, all in form of financial security to hopefully guide them into a healthier, happier, and brighter future. For once, the peoples of the U.S. managed to see that a part of their government have truly become freed from the reins of corruption, even by the smallest amount. And after such long periods of suffering for Americans across the country, Glenn knew now that hope stood strong in the hearts of the citizens he had guided to for his term in office. With such images of hope and greatness flowing through the president's mind, he had been reminded that not all the world shared such similar stories of success and says forward. The beaten down men, women, and children across Europe had suffered long in their continuous battles against their vicious oppressors. Similarly, with even a note of revenge in the U.S., the Pacific had remained embroiled in conflict with man against man across many islands of the sea. However, something changed. They had somewhere to look for hope. An example. A shining example of what they could be, what they ought to be, and with the beautiful side of the future ahead of they made sure they could become as prosperous as the United States of America. Glenn and Fitter responded to the opening of the door to his office behind him. Mr. President, are you all right? Mr. Bumper called. Do you hear the thrushes sing, Howard? Do you hear them? 33, 42%, nice. Uh, where's preparedness here? Alright, so this one says new training regimen. Man missions will increase. Expand on explore. Uh, advanced algorithms. It's not bad. Project Del Dallas. Nice. Base, increase to base preparedness for all missions. Prepare the blockade. Well, we don't really need that one. We're reworking the suit. Pinpoint thrusters. Liquid fuel is our future. Solid fuel is still king. New training regiments. Okay, so that's just RP. It's cool. So we get that one done. Um, I don't remember exactly what we need to do first, though. Best and brightest. Oh, buy research points? That's this new NASA. NASA's been left adrift and riderless for years, thanks to the short-sighted views of previous administrations since we lost the space race, cutting funds and pushing manpower to other areas, but that was just the first battle. Not the whole war. There's so much to discover among the stars, so much to explore, that we shouldn't be confining ourselves to simply being second best. With massive new funding, we can rebuild the space program and push all past, past all boundaries. It's time to go where no man has gone before. Staff and funding. Upgrade the facilities. The cost of missions would decrease. Gotta be good. Money never stops flowing. Nice. We're down all that middle route as much as possible. Because we got goals, my friends. We got big goals. And we like them big. Uh, increase budget. Oh, heck yeah. Nice. Anything else here? Conflict status. Oh, we're still fighting here. Oh my gosh. How are you guys still not done yet? We've won several times already. Oh, look at that. Nice. I guess I can go in, that'd just be great and fine dandy. Um, admin offices? Where does this one want to go? Arkansas. I've been to Arkansas before. Very hot down there, very hot. The dream never died, my friends. It never it did die, and it never will die. Not if I have something to do with it. Yeah, hopefully we can... Oh, a little more growth! Nice. Very good. A little bit more growth makes me happier. Hopefully it makes you happier too. Wow, these guys are really running out of equipment. Okay, yeah, we pretty much won this war already. Would y'all like to come over there? I greatly appreciate it. How much damage are you doing? Three? It's not much. It's alright though, we've been doing really well in these wars. Minus 0.08. That's so nice. Nice. Almost roughly three a month. Who do we have here? We have Cyrus Vance. Liberals win in Iran. It's finally over. We have successfully lifted the liberal faction above all its enemies, and the fascists and communists remaining are being dealt with as we speak. But we suffered significant casualties. What matters is that we finally have a partner in the Middle East that we can count on. Negotiations with the new government have started, and we believe that they will continue promoting our cause as long as we help them rebuild. Ooh, Rockefeller. Look at that. Ooh, Silent Workhorse. Nice. A handful of our soldiers remain in the country to subdue any rebel factions that could harm Iranian leadership. Since Tehran also suffered serious damage, our engineers close to chose to stay behind so that city would be rebuilt. In accordance with the Iranian aid bill. We've also sent economic and industrial advisors to the new government. They're a building of Iran. We'll take time, but when it's complete, our sole ally in the Middle East will be even more formidable than it was before the war. The torch of liberty shines brighter than ever before, ever before in Asia. We can only hope it stays lit. Look at that. More political power. They join, they join the OFN. 
Wait, they join? I thought they were just going to be observers. Grow a little more unified. It's American society grows a little more unified. Social democracy, authoritarian democracy goes down. Liberal democracy is well. Conservative democracy does go up. The RDs become more popular. Nice. Very high still. Only that's fine. Political landscape can't do anything there. Also, I did forget. Oh, one of the one of the people said that they did want. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's political power. Oh, almost roughly two day. Uh, for me to show you the Cold War stuff, because we're thirty two seventy one. We're literally more than double both Japan as well as the German Reich. If you combine the scores, we actually have more score than them. Nice. So here we have, of course, South Africa oil crisis is ongoing, which we're doing okay with. Philippine landing, not bad overall. Rankings, of course, this is us. Oh, that's the rankings, 3361, holy crap. Tensions. Tensions is very low, actually. Between them two, German, Germany and Japan is very high, and between us and them is not bad. Past incidents, annual decay, successful Stockholm conference was really good for us. Look at all the stuff we have here. Annual decay, Honolulu Accords, Reich intervention in the South African War, Hitler assassination attempt, and the Hawaiian Missile Crisis, Hawaiian Missile Crisis, wow, it's a lot. Spheres? We have 37 people, they have 17, they have 15, wow. Total sphere GDP, almost 700 billion, 460 and 400. Percentage of global GDP, almost 35%, 23%, 20%. wise, they have 28,000, we have only 13, less than 13,000. Burgundy has 153. Dismantle that many? No. Oh. Wait, we can activate. Should offer nuclear production and dismantle warheads to a certain value? Oh. Okay, nuclear weapon stockpiles. We make 52 every month. Active enrichment plans. Strike capability. Represents the capacity of a nuclear triad to adequately deliver our atomic arsenal. It can be increased by expanding our triad in the form of missile silos, subs, or strategic bombers. And its efficient delivery infrastructure will make our arsenal look less threatening to other countries, decreasing our nuclear stockpile score. Global coverage. Oh, well, that's what we got here. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Dream never died. And how's Russia doing, too? Happy December, everybody. I can't believe... Okay, they don't even have this, too. What the heck? Um, The dawn of a new day. John Glenn had become used to the frequent back and forth trips between Washington and Houston. The new NASA HQ called for some big decisions, often quite now, often days, and the president was always happy to drop by and lend a hand. Uh, <clears throat> After all, these were the opening days of a new age for American space exploration. Today, however, that might come all to an end. No longer would the president have to hold NASA's hand in person. Rather, the organization could be managed with only Colin Phil Coffer. Today, the president would meet with the administrator, James Webb, to formulate a comprehensive plan for NASA's future. Stepping into the meeting room, Glenn noticed it was empty, save Webb, and an intern or some such they did not know. Hello, James. Open Glenn. I hear you already hammered out what you would think would be best. Regardless, I'm always happy to help you. The administrator smiled warmly, sitting in his chair. Well, John, you could say that. Take a seat. I'll tell you all about it. The president took the seat opposite of Webb, and, well, gave me the quick and dirty. NASA today is pursuing so many projects and moving in so many different directions all at once that it's simply unsustainable. So now, every program we find will have to cross your desk first. Each program has different benefits and each has a price. The way I figured it, as much as you and I would want to, we can't afford to pursue every project that not be worth a darn. Not because it would be expensive, but because it would anger the public. People find the space program to be a novelty, but not, not a necessity. Too much money poured into it, and America will grow weary of the stars. So you job be organizing all the programs, replied Glenn. While I make sure that other areas of government get adequate attention and that we don't bankrupt the country in the process. Yeah. So what are we waiting for? Best and brightest? Heck yeah. There was a time when applications to join NASA outnumbered the available jobs by a factor of 5 to 1, and the best and brightest of America would, could, would excitedly jump to join the space program. Now, it's hard to fill all the positions, as there is no, more money and prestige in the private sector for boring jobs like financial analysis and designing cars. If getting back into the space race, then we need to get them back as well. Better wage is just part of the plan. We need to make sure that's, that people come willingly to bring new ideas and new perspective. They need to know that they are going to make our world a better place by exploring the cosmos. Oh, yeah. And army base as well. Vermont. Actually, before we do that, for money. No. Vermont, eh? Oh, can't do that. Okay, then. New York. South Texas, too. Might as well. Cool. So, we got that one done. Um, Cut of the programs. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Oh! Mission Control. So to sell zero percent prepared. We've invested zero over fifteen seven million seventy million in budget. Here's preparedness for the mission by investing more money in the program. Upgrading will assure best into this. The uh, Orion pro program are unmanned missions into low Earth orbit to test their technology and get acclimated to the cosmos. Minerva. I don't remember which one's one. Unmanned launch satellites in orbit, giving us some encryption decryption boosts. Ooh, that one. I could be wrong about which one we want to do, so. We need to do it, and we need more money, too. Ooh, we're going to run out of money. 
but the government annually funding 470, which can be put towards funding preparations. If we put too much on the program, the public will feel as if we don't care about them. What? Cut of the programs. No, we good. We good. By a large amount. Eventually we will have to. That's just fine. Whatever. You know, it's the cost of doing business. And my god, is there always a high cost? And the Clara... And you, actually. Oh, that guy's dead. Sucks to be you. They have Peron's attention now. Oh. Hold on. Can we send you volunteers now? Katif uprising. No. All right. Sucks to be Saudi, I guess. Yeah, they're fighting the entire faction. Good luck, Saudi Arabia. Maybe we should have went with Egypt, but then again, they're at war as well. So, oh, the Euro United Arab Emirates is here. Yeah, United Arab States. Rome Pact. How sad. Rome Pact. Oh. Wait. Why can we support Iran? Or Oman, I mean. Oh, they're fighting them too. Well, yep, I guess we're going back in. Oh, these are different types of helicopters, though. There you go. New NASA. Best and brightest. Staff of funding. Pentagon budgets mats if it's a single largest line item in federal, tr federal expenditures. Now, well, most of it goes to things like paying our soldiers, maintaining our tanks, ships, and planes. There's always a bit here and there that isn't going to keep America safe right now. That projects blow to defense contracts and theoretical programs that are years, if not decades, away from fruition. If there's some funding from these programs at NASA, then we can get to space much faster. And a few guys in uniform with too many stars on their shoulders and not enough imagination in their brain start yelling, so be it. Hmm. No more, more approval, that's fine with us. Increase budget. Looking up. President John Glenn walked into the newly renovated manned spacecraft center in Houston, Texas, stepping through the sparkling glass doors. Joe by several black clad agents of the Secret Service, the astronaut turned president found himself greeted by an old friend, James Webb, administrator of NASA's. Hello, James, said the president. The president is entourage. Uh, oh, no. Uh, the administrator are suffocated with the smell of his own. A darn fine facility you've let us build, John, he said, and by God, a gosh darn fine path is going to carve for us. Let me show you how round. We've already got some new, several new projects in the works. The president, with his entourage of guards, followed Administrator Webb through their vast halls of the new Houston facility, pointing out new projects along the way. So, down here we're planning rooms for future programs and technologies, namely the Orion Project, the Diana Project, or program, and the internal or integral launch and re-entry vehicle. The president shrugged, I'm a bit out of loop these days, James, why don't you fill me in? Well, that is the current plan for another attempt at the moon. In theory, we could just figure out where Apollo went wrong and use that knowledge in future missions, the re-entry vehicle project, or ILRV. As a current plan for a reasonable space plan, we could get uh, things, used to get things in an orbit at lower cost, like set us to spawn the crowds and nips, or, or or Iron as well. We want to launch heavy loads into space by using nuclear weapons as propulsion, and what's all this leading up to, if you don't mind me asking? The administrator smiled, turning around and walking towards the seemingly nondescript door at the far end of the hall, I was hoping he'd ask that. Reach him. The blank, blank door. He opened it and entered, followed by the President Glenn. Inside the room was poorly lit, but filled with bulky computers and desks, all manned by businessmen and women. On walls, illuminated maps of the red planet glow, terrain and topographical maps of potential landing sites. Utopia, Plantatia, Valles Marinas, Elysium, Plantita, and several others. We're already planning? Come on, John, replied Will. We've always been planning. It's just been a matter of funding. President Glenn and hauled deeply, gathering his thoughts. Well, he began, you have, much, you have as much as you need and more. The red planet waits. Nice. Test a rocket. 43% prepared. We've invested 0.125 of our 1850 million dollars. Nice. Upgrading, we can sa safely assure liftoff. Reviewing the rocket to ensure that everything is where it should be means one loose bulk can't torpedo the entire thing. Um, by running thousands of test simulations, we can predict everything that go wrong even before it happens. Uh, hiring some extra helps out to help out mission control, make sure we're able to react to any challenge, and then launch Orion. Test the rocket first. We don't want any issues here. Here, I have a couple, I have a couple million. Why can't we send anything here? I'm pretty sure we sent forces, do we not? Oh, I guess we didn't. I understand that. Sometimes it just seems like we do, but it doesn't. Go ahead. Sorry, Saudis. We wanted to help you out, but... We decided to go another way. We're working with the Germans here now. Because they wouldn't let us do it. I don't want... Why do we have to do it like this? 
I don't like that we have to use a focus for that, but whatever. I'm here for conflict, and we want as much conflict in the Middle East as possible. They didn't want our help, so. And we're too busy with other, our other projects, so. Sorry, but not really. If only Italy could keep the Middle East under control. Oh, the presidential election season is beginning. Going to be that? It's good. Long way to November. I'm going to vote for R and D. U me R D. Oh, so we're actually going to get even more Republicans? Um, let's go here. Doesn't look like Texas is going to do really well for us, or any states in general. Well, let's see what we can do. The game's just glitching out with this whole thing over here, so. Sorry, Saudi Arabia. But it's what the devs wanted. Oh, mine is ongoing. Huh. Not quite, but whatever. Oh, bringing technicians. De wait. Oh, get some research points. Decrease the budget. How many research points do we get? We have five research points. Five becomes what? Twenty-five. Okay, twenty. That's not terrible. Hundred percent is not bad either. Buy a blueprints. What do we do this one? We need money in the invest in this mission. What do you mean we don't have enough money? We have seven one point seven billion dollars. What? Is that glitched? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Upgrade the facilities. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory is the crown jewel of the American space program. However, with budget cuts and manpower shortages in the past few years, the facility has fallen into a state of disorganization and demoralization. But that's nothing, a few million dollars, some brand new room size computers, and a coat of paint camp fakes will assume the contagious dreams of youngsters wanting to build the spaceships of the future to explore the solar system to see if, both, uh, see if the truth is out there. Nice. Welcome to NASA. You hear new? Uh, asked a young, bookish looking man sitting next to Daniel at the NASA introductory meeting. Yep, he replied, I got snatched up from the lock key. It's NASA now. How can I say no? Huh, <laughs> yes, a young man sitting in his hand. Name's Brent Kelly, aerospace engineer. Just got in from the North American Aviation. Really excited to be here in Houston with you. Daniel Gelzer, Aerospace 2, maybe we'll be working together. Sure, w wait, Webb's up on stage, we should probably quiet down. The auditorium went silent as the famous administrator of NASA stepped up to the podium at the far side of the room. He shuffled some papers around, adjusted the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, our organization and our nation about to embark upon great journeys. Odyssey to the great boy that surrounds a fragile world. You will develop the technologies required to launch such missions. You have been acquired from all over the country. Of all colors and creeds, it guides towards untold discoveries. As such, I am honored to welcome all of you to our exceptional organization. Welcome to NASA. Happy to be here. Nice. Increase, increases workplace safety, better academic base, and spend more money. Okay, well, sometimes you gotta spend money to make money. Prepare the launch pad. 53% mm, of the way there. We're going to do it all anyway, so whatever. Money's fine. And the money never stops flowing. Oh, you betcha. It's never going to stop flowing, right? Oh, wow. Oh, even without that. Mm, we have so many billions. Even with that. We even went having a temp tax cut. We have so much money. We have almost $10 billion in reserve. And even though the economy's not really growing, it's, it's pretty much stagnant, which is really bad. But, whatever. It's weird when the Germans, Italians, and... Americans are all fighting the Saudi Arabians. Probably not a good thing for the Saudis, but, you know, whatever. Here you go. Expand payloads. Increase the amount of research points we get. That probably sounds like a good thing to do, actually. Forward. For unmet missions, base preparedness. Uh, we'll see. I'm not sure which one's better to do, so. We shall see. Probably in the next episode. I'll probably talk about that in the next episode. No, I don't want to do that one. No, I didn't say I want to do that one. Come on. I did not click on that. I know I did not click on that. I want Oman to win. I want Oman to win. But the economy. The economy stupid. Yes. Actually, how are we doing over here? Minus points away. That is so strong still. 42%, 33%, not bad. So we get a votes more. 1.898. Oh, and there it goes. Saudi Arabia. My apologies, Saudis. But you should have allied with us when, when you had the chance. So now they're under the Italian sphere, which is not very good for us, honestly. I made them even stronger, but whatever. At least the Germans didn't get them. Probably didn't do that well over here. Um, this guy should be a campaign. Oh, wow, it's very high RD support. Military funding. Increases NASA budget by 150 million. Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, I don't want to get caught for anything bad here. Joint testing programs. Oh. Joint testing increases our expenditure by 250. More cost? Heck yeah! Alright. Upgrade the facilities. Nice. Oh, what was that one? Increase public support by a small amount. Yeah, I get that one too. Why not? We have over $2 billion. The money never stops flowing. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration is now back on its feet and proposing some big plans. Probes explore all other planets in the solar system, revolvers from Mars, a gleaming new space station orbit around the planet, reusable space shuttles, and even a base on the moon, all powered by bigger, more powerful rockets. It'll be expensive in the tens of billions of dollars, but that's a small price to pay for to further our knowledge of space, universe, and place in it. And it'll be the Germans in every possible manner. They may have landed on the moon first, but my god, America's going to go to infinity and beyond. Bring them technicians, yes please. Spend more all oh, year. Oh look at that. Oh yeah, this one. Oh I don't know what you want to do. The amount of research points we get from successful missions, I don't remember. If we get more base preparedness from unmanned missions, it's only unmanned though. If you get more research points, you can do more things more quickly, but if you get more base preparedness, you don't you can spend less time doing other stuff as well. I like both. I'm gonna get more research points first, though. I don't know how much we're actually gonna get though. Oh um, actually, can we get some more no. Whatever. Um, school. So, uh, early army base could really be used more. Anyway, I don't want to forget about Alaska. Or Hawaii. Or Puerto Rico. Or down here as well. There you go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. There you go. More political power possible. Polls are updated. Very good. Spending programs. I have the military. I remember did, I, when I did this originally, I sat in front of the military. We get caught, and it's not very good for us. We could potentially get impeached as well, which is not good, but whatever. Nice. Um, well, we won. Technically, we did win it with Oman, so. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else we can do with that, so. Okay. They run a good campaign. Well, good for them. Oh, peace conference is over. Who, who won? Oh, was it Russia? Oh, look at the Regency. The rise of the Russian Empire. That looks really cool. History repeats itself, huh? Nice. Oh, boy. Hopefully this doesn't get copyright cut. The copyright claimed. Life is a cycle. All right. For the views Mustang 2, if you want to know about that, please go ahead and improve, adapt, adapt, and overcome. Survive in the cosmos. Human stress tests. Um, base preparedness of manned missions. Of manned missions will increase. We're doing unmanned missions, though, right now. Uh, get some research points. Base preparedness of manned missions. Look at reserves. Spend point. Cost of unmanned. Pathway to the sky. Next gen delivery system, which we'll, we'll need to do pretty much all these focuses, which we're going to hit pretty hard in the next episode, so. Which might be the last one. I don't know. Um, giving us increased war support as well as bots with both rockets, production truck, and airspeed. Uh, on the missions, power of the atom. We shall have it. We do need uranium. Oh god, the whole uranium thing next time. Oh god. Better professionals will be nice too, but. Pathway to the sky. The greatest hurdle to reach in space and not gaining altitude is attaining the speed necessary to maintain those altitudes and reaching higher orbits, such as that of the moon, require even more uh, and higher speeds or increased quantities of propellant. Whichever approach we decide on, we needed to continue our development of rockets technology to get back on parity with the other superpowers. The capsule is critical to keep the astronauts alive. The avionics is necessary to direct the rocket, but the propulsion system is the most important part of the rocket to get anywhere. We require an incredible amount of power to reach orbit, and to go further, we must continue to refine our approach. Now, either we do expand the explorer, base preparedness for unmanned missions goes up versus enhanced algorithms, mission rewards, and the base preparedness of unmanned missions will increase versus manual machines. And Project Day Dallas. Manned missions was uh, for giving us increased in base preparedness. Not bad. All right, launch, launch pad. Seventy-five percent is not good enough yet. Nope. Bring in them technicians. Want as much support as possible. Raise spending cap. Mm 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 mm. Not during election year. And now I'm sounding like a politician. Reworked uplinks. Her own dead, huh? What does this one do? 
Stronger alloys. Increase the base preparedness. Slightly increase their budgets. Stronger alloys. Slightly more. You know what? I think I'll do that one. Yeah, that would be bad. Anything else happen here? Oh, holy crap! Now the... Oh my god! The rest of New England up here just completely flipped over. That's pretty nice. Already support's pretty low. Um... Hmm... We try to campaign in the Deep South, but it probably ain't going to work very well for us. We'll see, though. It's always worth a try. Balls are updated. All right. Not bad. Yeah. Kazakhstan is just a mess. Still just got off a mess. And the power of the atom, huh? To the land down under. That speaks off. We want to do elephant. Ever since we decided to pour money, money into NASA, we've seen that a handful of Republican senators complain. Most of them argue that we are investing way too much money into the space program when the money could be used for other sectors of our economy or country. Some Republicans even believe we should cut funding to NASA entirely and pay for other important services. Recent polls show that these senators have support from the populations of their respective states. This kind of division within our party is unacceptable. Under the Glenn administration, we should get the American people thinking about the impending future. We need those habitable bases on Mars, for Christ's sakes, and with the world on verge of nuclear collapse, space exploration is more important than ever. We have to invest all the money we have in reaching beyond the stars. By God, we will make sure it happens. NASA needs all the money it can get. I can't even hear you. Still constantly bickering, that's fine. Oh. Mm. There we go. That's what we like to see. Whee. Three days left. Not bad. I'll do that one first. Give us budget. More budget. More budget. Oh god, there's 74 percent approval rating. That's not god. One day, launch Orion. Please, for the love of God, make it successful. Make it successful. All systems nominal. Good news from HQ. Our latest unmanned mission has a successful launch. NASA engineers have worked hard on the mission. It looks like it paid off. The American people watch their launch both around the launch pad and at home from the TV sets back in NASA. We're eagerly awaiting the critical data that will come out of this mission. Who knows what we might find? The cheers were heard across the nation as the rocket left the Earth. The lo rocket's launch went without a hitch as it sent it past the horizon. All systems are reporting back as normal, and we will proceed as planned. We should be seeing the results of our mission fairly soon, but for now it appears we're in the clear. Uh, for its anonymous Re mission rewards. We just received the full data from our last unmanned mission. Already our engineers are pouring over the data, but everyone down at HQ is happy with the results. Our boys down to R&D have also ideas on how the data could be put to use, potentially evolving a rocket program to even further heights. The announcement of a successful mission has garnered public support as well. More and more of our citizens are seeing our space program as the future of our nation. The people are setting their imaginations to, to what we'll do next. The continued success of our missions will continue to build public faith in our program. We get 31 research points and file public support from the unmanned mission. Nice. So we just did Minerva, right? No, we just know Orion. Actually, and that gives them more, uh, more, uh, success. Crispy, Orion, Minerva, yeah. It's Minerva next. 30 days, fine with us. And Minerva machines, the question of boosters, liquid fuel, and we need to do liquid fuel. We do do this one as well. Increase cost emissions, increase the base fairness emission rewards. Dusting off the plants. I forget which way we to go. I think this is the way we should go first, so. Uh, Minerva machines. Our computers are capable of calculations of speeds that would have been impossible a few decades ago, but they suffer from one fundamental flaw. They're only as good as the people operating them. The same goes for our spacecraft, integrated machines that require an advanced understanding of their operations. Every member of NASA must be intimately familiar with the role in the team prepared to do their job, from Director Webb to the astronauts manning our spacecraft to the support staff of the ground control. Machines serve a purpose as well, but they only reach out of the worlds under the guidance of men. Pretty much. Oh, it's already June. Oh, man, I want to get to the election probably for this episode. 22 research points. Not enough. Oh, yeah. Joint testing? Yes, please. Oh, good campaign. Nice. 79% so ain't too bad, too. Economy-wise, 0.2% growth. Really kind of garbage. Really kind of garbage. Advanced spy planes. Oh. All right, whatever. Sounds good to me. Uh, 43%, 34%, not bad. Not bad. I have a good campaign, so be it. 
Come on. Anything here yet? Nope. Well. Probably not gonna happen, but that's alright with us. Whatever. Man of machines. Alrighty, and what's up next? Seven of paint technicians. More technicians, more technicians, more technicians. Oh. Uh, is that really worth investing in? I'm not really sure if that's worth investing in. Uh, we'll do it anyways for now, because we can. Well, if it doesn't go well for us, then I'll see what type of funky stuff we can do off screen. Okay, wait, can we do this again? No, we're already campaigning. Yeah, we're already campaigning. I can see that one, yeah, again, so. Alright, anything else here? Uh, way too ahead of time. Transport helis. And then you guys too. Alright, not bad. Project Day of Dallas. No American has been in space since 62, when the space program had a funding slash over the protests of our current president. Our unmanned program has made great strides towards the ultimate goals, but to prove them ourselves in the to the American people and humanity, we must return to orbit. Project Day Dallas will put a man in orbit for the first time since Eberhard Kolnos man landing in January of 62. Further, our study of space travel and its effects on the human body. And show the world that the U.S. of A.S. return to the race across the final frontier. If you want to this, please go right ahead. Henry Scoop Jackson, Gene Kirkpatrick, you can win no trick. Scoop the White House? The way out. Well, John, that's why I sort of called you here. You are, after all, a former astronaut. You know a thing or two about them rockets. You're paying for the ones we're developing, so I want your opinion on what path we should go down. Uh-huh, replied President Glenn, crushing the telephone against his cheek, so what are our options? Well, some of our plans going forward for the moonshot involve a lot of building in orbit. We're going to need rockets that are plentiful and cheap so we can launch a large amount of a small craft into space such that can be constructed into large vessels. On the other hand, we can simply build one massive rocket, power enough to get to the moon and back. Glenn leaned back in his chair, scratching his chin. Well, why not both? A short laugh came from the other side of the line, followed by a pause. You serious? Well, we could probably do that. It'd be darn expensive, though, John. Hmm, the president said. I think I'll think about call you back. Cheaper rods always better. Towers, Avengers, and propellant go only go away. Let's just do it all and see what sticks. Oh, yes, that's an American way to do it. 41% for Minerva, huh? Fine with us. Okay, so this is dumb that it's just all... Oh, my God, please. Can someone win here? They're still, they're literally, they're literally still fighting, but a shady investor. President John Glenn sat in the Oval Office reading and signing a menagerie of papers spread out across the desk was interrupted by the ding of his PA's voice over the intercom. Miss President, uh, she said in her meek little voice, James Webb's on the line, the administrator of Na- uh, I know who he is, Francine, thank you, he said with a hint of annoyance. Picking up the phone, he greeted the NASA administrator. Hey, James. Hi, uh, John replied. Listen, we may have found a wealthy investor for the Diana program. How wealthy? Fairy. From what he says, it could cover up to a tenth of the entire project's cost. In exchange for regular updates on progress. There's a catch, though. His wealth seems suspect. I'd like to have the IRS out of the guy before accepting any more money from him. Hmm. That might scare him away, though. What's his name? Douglas DeVille. Well, I'll think about it. I'll give you a call back in a day or two. As long as it gets into space. No, thanks. What should you call? Your cool RD department. Really small. Budget up really small. Now we're going to do this clean. Oh, okay. whoa! We got more money that way. No thanks, man. We're going to do this clean. We have a clean administration. No corruption here. Absolutely no corruption. Can we campaign again? No. Okay, we got to wait. Just a little longer. It's only July, so. Men over machines, my friends. Project De Dallas. De Dallas. I keep saying that wrong, probably. So my apologies. Ooh. Wow. Political power plus eleven percent. Same two Republican Democrats. Four more years, everybody. Four more years of Glennism. Papa Glenn. Increase public support. Oh, we kind of forced to do that now. Anything else down here? No. What kind of stuff? It's actually this one. Increases base preparedness. So hopefully it goes up more. Uh, increase preparedness for unmanned missions. So hopefully we get enough research that it don't, won't even matter, but we'll see. 41%. We have more than enough money right now, which is good. I'm glad we spent some time doing the other stuff to get to where we are right now. But excellent RD campaign. Good, good, good. We love excellent campaigns, but I don't know why we can't do this. Well, this seems glitch. We have more than enough money to invest in this, so... I don't know. Should I use Consequence for this? Or maybe we have to wait for a Focus to unlock this? I kind of doubt it, though. We'll see. Which does kind of suck, so... Man over machines. It's only August, so they run a good campaign. Actually, let's get this first. Um, so I'm trying to get Texas. I kind of doubt we'll get it, but whatever. 
Question of boosters. As our rocket programs continue to develop, we must consider one of the most important questions to further our development. Which type of propulsion do we fo focus our efforts on? We've tried true solid fuel or the new and exciting possibilities opened up by liquid fuel. Uh, stress tests. Work in the suit. Of man missions. Need some research points. Mercury. Prove installation. Create unknown. Fuel tank research. Ready for anything. Ooh, that's a lot of political power. Wow. Public support will, of course, increase as well. Test the rocket. It's good to do. Bring the technician Renos. Public support. Yes, please. Uh, oh, crap. There's a lot of research. Oh, man. Oh, that went way down, too. That's not good. Yeah, we're already campaigning, so I'm not sure why we get that one. High powered relays. Okay. We need to keep as much research points as possible. Probe. So, we increase our projects. Proofy shields, we definitely need that one. We want to do man missions, I think, so. I probably screwed up on that just a little bit earlier. It's fine, whatever. Race spending cap, I do want to do that, but like I said, not during election year. I don't think we're going to do really well for the election as well, so. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, that's still not good. We have 30 billion, Jesus. Another excellent campaign. Hey, we really invest that much in the economy. Doesn't look too bad, now does it? Liquid fuel. Research does go up. Get some research points. The booster will be able to be done. They run a good campaign. We'll get for them. Um, can we actually do this again? Yeah, we can. Okay. My predictions. Well, uh, that's the plans. I want to get the things ready to go. Surviving the cosmos. Many times the U.S. of A. has ventured beyond the grasp of our soil's pla planet soil. And many times it's been successful. However, most recent plans to travel not just beyond our world but to the grace of others are far more daunting and difficult challenges than the American space program has ever faced. Having ne never launched astronauts beyond low Earth orbit, we are able to prepare for the dangers and difficulties of keeping them alive in space for more than a few days. Before we can begin the true work of getting to both the Moon and Mars, we must first surmount the challenge of ensuring that our brave sailor solar sailors are alive when they actually reach their heavenly destinations. Godfather release, if you're going to that, please go right ahead. Prepare the launch pad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. More budget, more money, more money. Global conflict? No one cares the crap about global conflict when we go to Mars. Nice. Boosties. Victims of war? Well, all of Saudi Arabia is a victim of the war. I'm not sure we were supposed to do that yet, but I love the right side here. It's a lot of fun. A couple days left to survive in the cosmos. Yeah, doing this one might not be bad. Human stress tests. Eh, new training regimens. We're not doing mad missions yet, though. Mediocre. Oh, come on. Mediocre campaign. Well, new training regimens, preparedness of man missions. Question of Saturn rocket booster. Another day at the White House was passing as President Glenn saw NASA at the forefront of his mind. He was so focused on space nowadays that he wondered whether or not he was a good fit for the president. The presidency. Not like it mattered now, it was what, was what formerly a distant future is now not in Glenn's sight. It was a sole mission to bring his native country beyond the space threshold that contained his predecessors. He mused the potential space future of America over some coffee before the phone at his desk rang. To a surprise, it was a NASA official. Mr. President, we have been reviewing our Saturn project, and we are close to finishing the heavy payload rocket request. Our engineers have been debating whether we should use liquid fuel, or liquid rocket fuel for the booster, or standard rocket fuel. We wanted to ask you, since NASA's budget is growing tighter every day, the Saturn project. This rocket is going to be a spark that ignites the country's interest in space, and the President would need to respond fast. Glenn knew how expensive liquid fu rocket fuel was, and if we were to choose this option, all NASA mission costs from now on would increase. This would help further ensure a successful mission, but due to the increased cost, the public would grow more unhappy if it were to go with the standard rocket fuel. The mission cost would decrease, but the base mission prep would also decrease. It's a really interesting question. Saturn 5 will be able to research. Balls are updated. Liquid fuel is away, though. 
Liquid fuel rockets are an all-American invention. They may have been co-opted by the Nazis for the V2 program, but they were invented by an American, Dr. Robert Goddard, two decades before anyone cared about the name Von Braun. Or Von Braun. Patriotic sentiments aside, the Germans used them for good reason. The liquid fuel is far more efficient than solid due to the compressibility of liquids in a significantly lighter rocket. We'll beat the fascists at their own game and rise the stars in a stream of burning liquid propellant. Nice. We're going to research things that we'll probably never ever use, like advanced cruiser holes. Well, actually, those are not bad again. Good. It's over here. We are 54%. 44%. Not 54. 44%. Not bad. Arizona still may have some hope. I mean, probably not, but whatever. Okay, we're going to do it. Getting edge medals for Diana and Ares. Proof heat shields. Base preparedness for manned missions. For unmanned missions. Orion, Eros, and Minerva. Right now, we're doing, we're doing Minerva. We might do it several times, though. 25 days. Is that worth investing that much into that program? We do need to do this heat shield anyways. Mm. Increase our base preparedness for unmanned missions. Our rewards from successful missions. I'm going to go for heat shields because we, we need them. We'll need them eventually anyway, so. And then we'll launch it. But elections first, my friends. Elections first. Issue of the economy. If you're worried about that, please go right ahead. Since we're here anyways. Can't do a political landscape yet anyways. Gosh darn it. In here as well. No. Oh boy. Here we go, everybody. Oh, this is an election. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Please. Oh. Oh. Where's Jackson getting support? Where's the... Old oh my god. Holy crap! Holy crap! Did you expect this? I didn't expect this. He won every single state. Everyone loves John Glenn. Holy smoky mother rocket fires. That was actually really cool. <laughs> this was an absolute blowout. I feel so bad for Henry Jackson. He tried, I'm sure. But Jesus Christ, he lost every state. Every state. Jesus. Holy crud, Daddy! All oh, the center is dead. Now it's just a bunch of Republicans, a few Democrats on the right side of the MVP. Holy crap! But I think that's going to end us here for this episode. Man, that's really good. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to continue shooting for the stars with Papa President Glenn. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.